everybody. My name is Danielle Zandarov and I am the founder of South Bay Wellness Center in Seville. And um, I am incredibly passionate about helping people achieve health naturally. And so I'm excited to join you today to talk a little bit about the alternative medicine cabinet. I know we are entering the week winter season and everybody's worried about colds and flus and all sorts of viruses these days, right? So I want to talk to you about some natural things that you can do to keep yourself nice and healthy. So um, just as a reminder, anything that you hear that today is for educational purposes. All right, let's begin. So, you know, most people have a medicine cabinet that looks like the one that you see here, right? Filled with all kinds of prescriptions and medications and over the counters and, and Tums and Aleve and Tylenol and, you know, all those sort of things. But what I'm here to share with you is that your medicine cabinet can actually look like the one on the other side. Homeopathic remedies, essential oils, uh, vitamins, nutrients, things that you can use naturally to help preserve your health. And this is really important because a lot of times what we don't realize is then when we're reaching for the quick fix, we're oftentimes not really getting to the root cause of why we're experiencing a specific symptom. So for example, people have a headache, what do they go and grab? They go to grab an aspirin, but does the aspirin actually fix the headache? It covers up the symptom, but it doesn't get to the root cause of why that symptom is occurring. Perhaps dehydration might be at the cause of that headache and all we need to do is have a glass of water. Our body, our liver, our gut, our digestive system would be so much happier with a glass of water, for example, than an aspirin. So I invite you to kind of switch your paradigm today and let's look with a new lens. What is it that we can use to be able to help ourselves deal with some of these symptoms because we don't want to be uncomfortable, but what can we use that's actually going to support our body through it? So, you know, first thing we need to talk about is, you know, weighing the pros and cons of the different options that we have. And we can decide to go for over-counter the stuff. We can decide to go for medications. And by the way, guys, just for full disclaimer, I'm not saying that medications are not needed, nor that you should stop any medications and use any of the suggestions today. Of course, that's all things that you do with correspondence with your medical provider. But we have to begin to weigh, weigh the two options of what can we use to benefit our health and to help us feel better. So, you know, this is Thomas Edison and Thomas Edison said, well, the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will interest his patients in the care of the human frame, in diet and in the cause and prevention of disease. And that really is very different from the paradigm from which we operate in our society, right? In our society, it's kind of like we're looking for what's wrong with us, what do we need to take to get rid of it? And that's it. But we're never asking the question of why is it occurring to begin with? And that really is an important piece. You know, Benjamin Franklin said it best, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. You know, we have a lot of clients who come into our office and they're been ingrained to kind of look for what is that thing to fix the symptom, but not what's the thing to get to the root of it or to prevent it from happening in the first place. So how can you first begin to prevent these things from occurring? So here are some guidelines for you. So number one, eat a ton of fruits and vegetables. I know we're moving into the winter season and people are concerned about raw fruits and vegetables. You can have amazing, delicious soups that are warm and soothing for the body. Okay, you can have your vegetables steamed, you can have them baked, you can have them boiled. There's so many different things that you can do that you don't have to just eat salads to get in, you know, your, your fruits and your vegetables. The next guideline here is to skip processed and packaged foods. Processed and packaged foods, of course, are not serving us. They're basically empty, uh, empty calories, excuse me, additional chemicals. These are things that are not going to provide our body with the nutrients that we need. The other thing that I like people to be aware of is animal proteins. Diets high in animal proteins are higher in contaminants. They are also higher in saturated fats, and they take a toll on the body, including causing heart disease, diabetes. 
So it's really important that the mainstay of your diet be heavily focused on your fruits, your vegetables, your whole grains, your legumes, right? Beans, incredibly important for keeping your gut nice and healthy. Next rule of thumb, avoid white sugar, white flour, and white table salt. These guys, if, if all you made was one change to stay out of the medicine cabinet to begin with, this would be an ideal change for you to make. The next piece is to go outside, get into the sun, get connected to the earth itself, use the frequencies of the earth to actually allow your body to heal. We don't do that these days. We have such a disconnection to outside and nature, yet this is such an important piece. Another thing to be very well aware of is the electromagnetic frequencies. I know you're all watching this on some device right now, right? So if we're not protecting ourselves from those electromagnetic frequencies, they impact the function of our cells, makes it really difficult for our bodies to stay healthy. Not to mention the fact all of the emotional stress that comes off the devices and the social media and all of that as well. Another important key is to stay on top of your dental health. We don't often think of our dental health as contributing to health of our entire body, yet it is critical and crucial for us to maintain good oral health because it can impact everything else that's in our body. The next one on here is de-stress, and I know that this one is one that's sometimes difficult for people, but we do need to take the time for ourselves even if it's just 20 minutes a day to sit and be, to have quiet and calm, to take a moment to just be present and enjoy. You know, life is really busy. We're always on the go. We're always doing something. There's always people in our lives who are always going to upset us. This is part of every day. And so finding the things or the techniques that work for you to help bring down your level of stress will help you maintain better health. Our next piece here is monitoring your first morning urine pH. When our clients come in, we give them pH paper and we have them monitor their first morning urine pH because that's a good gauge as to where your health is. You really want your first morning urine pH to be in the 6.4 to 7.0 range. Anything higher than that's not good. Anything lower than that is not good. And the way that you do that is making sure that you have a diet that's really high in minerals, you're getting those minerals in, that your body is free from infection, and that you're taking care of yourself. And then finally, the other guideline to keep us out of the medicine cabinet is to listen to your body. Your body speaks to you all the time. Pay attention to what it's saying. Pay attention. Did you eat something that you don't feel great afterwards? Well, pay attention. What was that that you ate? Maybe your body doesn't react well with that food. Pay attention. Do you have a little headache coming on? Did you drink today? How much did you drink? Maybe your body needs some water, some extra hydration. So listen to your body. In our society today, we often have this disconnect between mind and body. But I want you to bring them together and pay attention to what your body's saying. It tells you what it needs. All right. Moving along, I know I don't have too long to do this, so I'm trying to give you a lot of information in a short period of time. So some of the key items to have in the natural medicine cabinet. So one of the most powerful things that I love is colloidal silver. Um, it works like an antibiotic. It's antibacterial, it's antiviral, it's anti-inflammatory. It's great for colds, for flus, pneumonia, ear infections, wound healing, pink eye, burns, eczema, all of these different things. And you can buy it in different forms. You can buy it as drops that you put underneath your tongue. You can buy it in a spray. I like the nose spray. If you're dealing with sinus issues, you can spray it into your nostrils. will help kill any bacteria that's in there. As we're wearing masks more and more these days, you can get a, you know, a colloidal silver that has, is in a clear liquid. You can spray it on the inside of your mask to kill any of the bacteria that's on your mask. Or I know with a lot of the mask wearing, people are now getting prone to more and more sinus infections and just respiratory infections in general because we're breathing in things that we shouldn't be breathing in with the masks on our face all the time. So you can use the colloidal spray in your nostrils after you've worn your mask for a while. You can also use it on your mask. But colloidal silver is a great, like a natural antibiotic that you can have on hand in your medicine cabinet. 
sea salt is another one. And having a good quality, I love to use the, the uh, Premier Pink Salt from Premier Research Labs. Uh, sea salt he has a lot of fantastic qualities. It's an excellent thing to have in your medicine cabinet, have ready to go. You can use it for just brushing your teeth. It's excellent for, for your gums and for your oral health. You can use it for gargling. So you've all, you know, so an old wives tale, gargle with salt water if you have a sore throat because it helps to kill any of the bad bacteria. For those of you who are dealing with pain, it's excellent for to do a bath with salts. It can also be excellent for skin exfoliation. And for those of you who are not aware what this guy is doing in the picture here, he is using a neti pot. And the neti pot is nasal irrigation. So using a little bit of a high quality salt and purified water, warm water, of course, you send the water in one side, it comes out the other, but what it's doing is really cleaning and cleansing that area. I have a love-hate relationship with the neti pot. It does work. It is, you know, good to use. Sometimes it's not my favorite thing to use though, right? It's not always fantastically comfortable, but it does work, especially if you are prone allergy season, sinuses, sinus infections, colds, flus, a good, a good piece. Um, a good quality sea salt can also be optimal for digestive support. Unfortunately, as many of us age, you know, past 20 or 30, our digestive fire slows down. And sometimes we need something like, uh, you know, digestive enzymes and hydrochloric acid to really have our digestion stimulated. But for, for people, oftentimes, especially those who are younger, a little bit of sea salt will help stimulate those digestive juices. The next one are homeopathic remedies. I love homeopathic remedies, and there are so many ones that are out there that are good for you to use. So here is a list of them. So Arnica Montana, I carry that with me all the time. Anytime there's a bump, an injury, a fall, a bruise, the Arnica Montana is wonderful for, for helping to heal from that inflammation quickly. If you've overeaten like Thanksgiving or Christmas or those holidays, Nux Vomica is one that would be fantastic. For wound healing itself, you have Calendula. Uh, Ignacia for when you're in grief or shock, severe emotion. Belladonna for a high fever. Or if you think you've eaten something that's bad, the Arsenicum album is another good one. Ledum palustre is another one that I keep in my medicine cabinet that's good for insect bites, help take care of that swelling and itching that occurs. And you know, there is a combination that's out there in all the different stores, the oscillococcinum, that is fantastic for colds and flus. And homeopathic remedies are, you know, homeopathy without going into extreme detail here, but homeopathy is based upon the premise of like equals like. Uh, like cures like, excuse me. And so when it comes to homeopathy, it's like, um, you know, your, your eyes are watery from your cold and flu. And, you know, you're looking at that specific symptom. Well, what causes that symptom? Ever cut an onion? What happens when you cut an onion? Your eyes water. So something like Allium Sepa, which is a homeopathic remedy, is great for that constant, you know, mucusy, runny, colds and flus kind of things. So homeopathy takes an essence of that and uses that to stimulate the body's own immune system to heal itself. So homeopathic remedies are fantastic. Food grade hydrogen peroxide is another great one to have around. Uh, not only do I use it to clean my fruit or clean my cabinets, but it's an antimicrobial. So great for, for getting rid of anything you're worried about in terms of germs on your hands or your counters or your food. It's good for earaches. It's good for colds in general, as well as wound heat cleaning. I think many of us are accustomed to using hydrogen peroxide. Food grade is a higher quality grade and does need to be diluted. I do use it also for cleaning produce. It's also good for candida and yeast infections. Another great one to have in your medicine cabinet is neem oil. It's anti-infective, it's antifungal, it's good for acne and eczema, wounds. It's also great for those of you who brush your teeth or you floss your teeth and your gums bleed, Neem oil is fantastic to rub all the way around your gums consistently for a while to clear that infection that's present in those gums. Doesn't taste great, right? But it really does the job and it does the job well. 
uh, athlete's foot and dandruff are other ones that uh, neem oil is very effective for. Tea tree oil is another one I like to have. It helps to soothe sunburn, relieve itch. It's also great as a household cleaner, as an antimicrobial. It's good for any kind of fungus on your like toenail fungus, uh, as well as for getting rid of ticks. And on Long Island here, we know it's tick population everywhere. Um, it's also very good for helping heal skin infections. So other things that we can have, raw honey. So those of you who suffer from seasonal allergies, you know, be having a consistent routine of some local raw honey will help with those allergies, okay? Aloe vera is excellent. If you have a good aloe vera juice, it's good for the healing of the digestive system, but that aloe vera can also be used topically. Coconut oil is fantastic for having dry skin. It's also fantastic for, for what we call oil pulling. So swishing around oil in your mouth for an extended period of time and then spitting it out in the trash will help to pull out some of those toxins uh, within your, your, your mouth. Um, coconut oil can also be used as a natural deodorant to be used on wounds as well. So castor oil is another one that I often recommend to my clients using castor oil packs. These are topical packs. You're not ingesting the castor oil because that wouldn't be good. But these are topical packs that you apply to areas of the body where you're experiencing pain or congestion. Uh, you know, the, the belly area, if someone's experiencing menstrual cramps or digestive upset, if you have liver gallbladder issues, applying it to the area of the liver and the gallbladder. So castor oil packs, very effective. Also, having specific vitamins, minerals, herbs, and essential oils on hands are really important. So, you know, there are things that we should be taking to boost our immune system. For example, everyone should be taking some vitamin D. We're just not out in the sun. We're not experiencing it enough. Uh, zinc is another important one as we worry about colds and flus. We can take supplemental zinc, but we can also get zinc by eating extra sunflower seeds, having, you know, two teaspoons of sunflower seeds every day. Um, other ones that are really important are minerals. Having some sort of mineral is important. Heavy, like fermented greens caps we use in our practice here are, are high in minerals and high in nutrients. Again, greens, really, really powerful. And then, of course, you go back to making sure that your diet is on par. So let's go through a couple of things that we can look at. So let's say you're dealing with digestive issues. So what do we look at for digestive issues? Number one, look at your diet. Pay attention to the food sensitivities. Uh, eat fermented foods. Make sure you're getting in probiotics. Things like fennel seeds and dill seeds. Those can be effective to chew on and help stimulate the digestive juices. Uh, licorice root and, and slippery elm, those are herbs that you can use as teas. Things like peppermint, ginger, and turmeric, also highly effective for soothing the digestive system. And like I said before, things like HCL, digestive enzymes, those are also powerful. And going right back, you see it looks like she's doing a castor oil pack right there. Those castor oil packs are very helpful and healing. What about allergies? If you're dealing with allergies, you know, a lot of that comes from congestion at the liver gallbladder area. So think about getting your fats from nature only, having olives instead of having olive oil, having avocados instead of having avocado oil. You know, you can also use herbs like dandelion, turmeric, milk thistle, cinnamon, and again, those castor oil packs, highly effective when dealing with allergies. Allergies also relate back to your digestive health. So make sure that your digestion is strong and healthy. Apple cider vinegar, raw honey, all good things to help with allergies as well. Uh, nettle leaf, quercetin, bromelain, very powerful as well. We have a product we use in my practice called Aller Caps that contains those different things. Histaminium would be your homeopathic remedy of choice and lavender and peppermint, excellent essential oil choices. For colds and flus, number one thing is build up your immune system, reduce your stress, make sure you're getting in lots of great fruits and vegetables, lots and lots of color to keep your immune system strong. Garlic is an excellent, excellent, excellent antimicrobial added into your diet, okay? Peppermint, ginger, thyme, good cold and flu herbs and spices to add in. Drink lots and lots of fluids. Nature's solution to pollution is dilution. 
Another one is lemon, lemon highly effective. And there's an old um, you know, naturopathic technique where if you have warm onions, you apply them to your chest, that will help with the cough as well. Elderberry syrup is another popular common one to help with cold and flu season. And we already talked about the homeopathic remedy. But don't forget your essential oils because they are very powerful. You want to make sure that you have good quality essential oils, though. Next is headaches. What can we do with headaches? So first, I've already mentioned it multiple times. The hydration piece is key. But your diet, your stress levels are important. So are breath and movement. Okay, you want to think about there's an acupressure point between the first and second toe. If you press on that acupuncture point between your first and second toe, that can also help soothe the headaches. Some people like to put cayenne by their nose. That opens up the blood vessels and relieves some of that pressure. Apple cider vinegar compresses, as well as almonds. The salicin in almonds can help relieve some of that headache tension as well. Ginger tea, chamomile tea. Uh, as well are good. Fever few as an herb, as well as different essential oils can be helpful. Again, you want to get to really like, what's the root cause? Why is your headache occurring to begin with, rather than just grabbing for that aspirin? And if you're having repeated headaches, you want to really begin to explore that. Ah, and let's get to one of our final ones here. That is fatigue. And so if we are constantly exhausted, again, you want to find out why. What's happening with your digestion? What's happening with your diet? Guys, I know like all these delicious processed foods and fast foods and things like that, it's okay to indulge once in a while, but you wanna make sure that most of your diet is coming from whole clean foods and that will alleviate so many of the different illnesses and ailments that people are stashing their medicine cabinet to cover up the symptoms of. Okay, having immune support, really, really important. Adrenal support, things like B vitamins and vitamin C and high quality support, they can support those adrenal glands and given all the stress that we've been dealing with, that can be very important for many. Um, sleep, there is no substitute for sleep. So you should be getting solid sleep. Make sure there's no lights on in your bedroom. The Wi-Fi is turned off. You're not on your screen but first thing in the morning and right before you go to bed. These are important pieces of sleep. And you should be able to sleep through the entire night without getting up to urinate. I know that's a common problem that clients come into the office with. So if you're getting up to, in the middle of the night to urinate, need to be able to begin to consider, well, what is it that's interrupting your sleep? And the same thing, if you're not falling asleep easily and, and waking up easily and staying asleep, then you want to begin to explore why is that happening? Is there a hormonal imbalance? Is it a digestive issue? Are you out of balance in general? Do you need to work on stress? Okay, so really take, you know, a powerful approach to your sleep. The next piece is exercise. We have to get moving. Exercise and movement is what gets our lymphatic system going. So make sure you're doing something, even if it's seven minutes a day, seven minutes a day. In fact, we have a seven minute workout that we share with our clients, seven minutes workout to help you get everything moving. If you want that workout, send me an email. My email address is danielle at southbaywellness.com and we'll send you a, a copy of that exercise regimen to do in seven minutes a day. Get your body moving. Bee pollen is another one. Keep your body nice and strong. As is, you know, we think about the thyroid health. It's so rampant and prevalent in our society today. So having natural source iodine like from seaweed or, or having selenium from a couple of Brazil nuts a day are excellent ways to get in there and support the thyroid naturally. So with that, you guys, I believe that I am out of time. So I thank you for joining me this uh, today for this information on how you can begin to start to heal your body naturally and different things that you can have in your medicine cabinet. So with that, my name is Danielle Zanzarov. I'm from South Bay Wellness. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out at danielle at southbaywellness.com. I'll be happy to answer any further questions that you have. Have a good day.